We're now in the home stretch and we'll finish this denture fabrication. So once you are finished with all of your gingival festooning and you're happy with the denture base and the tooth position, we can do the final step and now process this denture into its completed form. So we're at step four of four. This is what will come up right after you finish the uh, festooning step. And let's go through these settings. You've got your teeth offset. And I'll show this once it processes, but the software is going to create a socket for each of these teeth to go in. And since oftentimes people will print the teeth in white and the base in pink, you'll have to bond those together. So think of the teeth offset as your cement spacer between the teeth and the denture base. This will give you enough room that these can insert without binding and they should go all the way to their full position. And then you've also got the minimum denture thickness. Now this is not referring to the overall denture thickness that we indicated in the previous steps. What this is referring to is the thickness that it's going to maintain in the areas where it has to trim teeth. So as you can see, this particular case, the teeth are impinging into the maxillary model and the software is going to automatically trim those teeth back but we don't want it to be a dead zero trim. We actually want to over trim it slightly so that we can maintain the full integrity of the base thickness on the internal. And so this is the number that's going to control that. It defaults to 0.2. You can change that up if you want to, but that's going to maintain at least a 0.2 thickness of the denture base before it gets to the socket where the teeth need to go in. And you've also got two check boxes here. You have the option to generate a tooth reduction coping. That is something you should only ever check on if you are using the physical denture tooth sets, so the nobilium teeth that we have in the software. Um, if you had this situation where there's teeth impinging into the model using physical teeth sets, as is oftentimes the case with a conventional denture, then those teeth are going to have to be trimmed but the software can't just trim that automatically since these are physical teeth sets again. So instead, what we can do is generate a tooth reduction coping, and this would be an additional file that we could print out, and it would allow you to now take those physical denture teeth, stick them into this re tooth reduction coping, and anything sticking out the bottom side, you could then trim very quickly and get your teeth to where they match the digitally trimmed teeth. So again, I'm not using physical denture teeth here, but I am going to turn this on just to show you what the file would look like once it generates it. And finally, you have the option to connect all the denture teeth into a single STL file. This just makes exporting a lot easier and it will make the handling easier so that you can print this as an entire tooth chain or mill it as an entire tooth chain rather than as individual teeth that have to be bonded. So I'm going to check that on as well. I would suggest you always check that on if you're going to be doing a printed or a milled denture and if you're using the digital denture teeth, not the physical denture teeth. Okay, so generally you would check on one or the other of these. I'm just going to check both of them on here just for demonstration sake so that you can see the files that are generated. So I'll click finalize now and the software is now going to begin doing all of the tooth trimming, creating the sockets in the denture base, and this step can take a minute or two so don't get uh, in a hurry and just start clicking on the screen. Wait till all the processing gets done and you'll see the final files that result. So the software has now finished processing and we have our finalized denture and I'll try to go through all of the files that are generated and show you what they look like. First of all, I'm going to turn off the yellow master model. Before I do, I just want to reiterate that you can see how tightly adapted the fit is. Previous uh, versions had a problem with over smoothing this, which cost a little bit of accuracy and that has now been remedied. You can see this is perfectly adapted to the exact shape of the underlying master model. So I'll turn this master model off and let's look through the files. In your tooth and STL surfaces panel, you can scroll through and see that there's lots and lots of files that have been generated here. And I'm going to check off the denture tooth reduction coping right now. And let's just look at the finalized denture base. So remember in the previous step that we indicated for it how much of a minimum thickness we wanted to maintain in the socket areas and you can see that the teeth have been trimmed and the software maintained the full integrity of the internal surface of the denture here. And that minimum thickness in the previous step is indicating what is the thickness right here in the areas where the teeth have been trimmed. Okay, so we changed that to 0.3 and you can see that uh, we've got full integrity of the internal surface of the denture. 
You could also now turn on the connected denture teeth so you don't have to deal with the individual to teeth. Rather, you can see that these have all been turned into a single STL file. The teeth have been merged and they've been bridged here between each contact point. So this will be able to print or mill all as a single unit and it makes it much easier for you to handle and it makes the bonding process easier too to not have to deal with individual teeth. The software does generate a path of draw so that this entire tooth chain can insert in and out without needing to go and remove undercuts. And so that's why you can look here and see that this area has been trimmed. Uh, that will always be the most pronounced in the area of the anterior teeth just because they do have the inclination to them that the posterior teeth don't have. Now let's turn both of those off and turn on the denture tooth reduction coping. As I said earlier, this is something you would not ever do unless you're using the physical denture tooth sets, but I've done it here just for demonstration purposes. And what this is, is just another version of the denture base, but it has allowed perforations all the way through. And so what you could do now is if you were using those physical nobilium denture teeth sets, you could take these five anterior teeth that had impingements into the model you can pop those into this base and then anything that is sticking through to the underside here represents parts of the teeth that need to be trimmed off. So let me turn on those anterior teeth. And now if we look at this, just pretend that these were those physical nobilium denture teeth. Once you printed this object, you could now just take them and quickly go through and remove all of these impingements. So unlike when you're doing traditional dentures and you have to adjust on the tooth a little bit, take it over, see if it fits yet, come back, adjust a little more, and you're really guessing. You don't know exactly where to adjust on these. With this method, you're going to know exactly where to adjust, and you're not going to have to do any in excess more than what is required to just get these teeth to fit in the base. If I turn these teeth back off, I also want to show you some files that get generated. Anywhere that there is an impingement, the software is going to refabricate those teeth, and this time it's going to have an R beside the name which represents a reduced tooth. So let's turn on the reduced teeth and you can see that when we're using virtual teeth sets the software can very easily resolve those and it reduces these teeth enough that you can maintain that minimum thickness of the denture wherever there was an impingement. And the same thing will be done to the final single STL file of teeth. If you were to look at this while I've still got the denture tooth reduction coping on, you can see that the single STL file of all the teeth connected has been reduced so that it's going to fit perfectly into the proper base. So if you were doing this as a milled or a printed denture, there's really only two files in this uh, final result that we need to pay attention to and export. And that would be the denture base, which is labeled denture-fin, that is the final base, which represents the one which has been trimmed and has the sockets to put your teeth into. And then finally, you would also have your tooth chain. These are the teeth that have all been connected because in the previous step, we checked on the box that said to connect these all as a single tooth file. So you don't have to go exporting individual teeth now like you did in previous versions. And the last thing I'll mention here is that many times people like to go with a monolithic denture that's just all printed in a single material such as a, a white tooth material and apply some gingiva around the necks of the teeth. If you choose to do that, then rather than exporting the trimmed base, the one labeled denture-fin, you would rather go up here and do the one that's just simply labeled denture base. This is the denture base which has no trimming done to it. So if I exported the final connected teeth denture chain and the base labeled just simply denture base, then we could export these together and create a monolithic denture. So let's go through the process of how we would do the various exports. I would usually recommend that when you do a denture that you export them in both forms, both as a monolithic denture in case you ever want to have a backup that you can quickly print in the future. And then I would also export the two piece denture, which has the teeth and the base. So since I've got it on right now, let's go ahead and export a monolithic denture. It's worth noting that when you go to the export screen, whatever you have visible right here prior to going to export, these are the objects that are going to be checked on in the export screen. So now let's go up to File, Export Data, and here you can see that the only objects that are checked on are the denture base and the connected teeth chain. 
So I'd always do this at standard quality. You can do high and very high, but frankly it just makes a bigger file size and it's going to be beyond the ability of your printer or your mill to reproduce those. So I would simply stick with the standard export quality and that will give you a little smaller file. And I'm going to click export. You'll get a warning that there's going to be a single denture export deducted. And so I'll click OK. And then we just need to tell this where you want to save it. And so I'll do it under my download, save it wherever you would like. I'm going to label this one monolithic denture and then click OK. As I mentioned, I would always suggest doing an additional export, which is just the teeth and then just the base. So remember, anything that you have checked on when you do an export is going to get combined into a single STL file. So we utilized that in the previous screen to make a monolithic denture. We had multiple objects turned on. However, if I want to make these as separate files to print the teeth and the base separately, I can just turn on the connected teeth chain, go up here to File, Export Data, and again, since that's all I had visible, it's the only thing that's going to be checked on, and I can click Export again. Notice that this time I did not get a screen coming up that tells me I'm going to have an export deducted. It's not like you have to choose one or the other. Once you've exported that arch's denture, you can export as many other versions of it with trim teeth, not trim teeth, with reduction copings. All of that is not going to cost you another export. It's just one per arch. So this one I'm going to label single tooth chain. And then I'm also going to turn that off and open up the denture dash fin. This is the final trimmed base and I want to export it by itself. Export data, export, notice no warning about deducting a export and this one is going to be labeled denture base with sockets. And then I don't need it for this case because again we did use virtual teeth sets which the software trims automatically but just to show you how you would do it you can export your denture tooth reduction coping. I'll go to file export data and label this one reduction coping. So those are all of the files that we could possibly need out of this denture and I, again I would suggest exporting them all. It doesn't cost you anything and it's just a few seconds extra to export them but that way if in the future you wanted to print a monolithic versus a two-piece denture you've got the ability to do so. I oftentimes use those monolithic dentures in conversions, things like all in four conversions, uh, so there's many uses for that. Now just for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through making the lower denture, but just realize that it's just the exact same process. Here we would turn on just the lower master model and then go back to your denture design panel. And this time we want to build a lower denture and we're going to indicate that it is a mandible and let's hit create denture. And it's going to ask you, do you want to continue planning on that denture or do you want to plan a new one? We're going to plan a new one and it brings back up the lower teeth and now you proceed through all of the exact same steps on your lower arch. Now let's go to my documents and look through these files. I'm going to open them in Mesh Mixer so that you can see them. Let's open first of all the monolithic denture. Remember here that we exported both the tooth chain and the non-trimmed denture base simultaneously and by doing that you see that now we have a single STL file which you could print. So this would be your monolithic denture. I'm going to now import all of those other files so that you can see them. Let's do the denture base with sockets, the single tooth chain, and the reduction coping. And you see now that I have an objects browser with all of those different files turned on. This is the tooth chain, again in a single file. You have the denture base which has the sockets for a two-piece denture. And finally, you have the denture tooth reduction coping. Now, just to save on resin, if I was going to print uh, denture tooth reduction coping, I'm not going to waste enough resin to print all of this. I'm really only concerned with that anterior area. And so there's many different ways. You could trim these in Blue Sky Plan using the cut tool. Um, if you do use Mesh Mixer, you could simply cut away most of that because this would be the only thing that I'm really after. And so usually what I'll do is I'll re-export this and replace my denture tooth reduction coping just to save on resin. So I'll replace that 
And in closing, let me just show you how you would print these. I use the SprintRay Pro printer. Um, all of this will be dependent on your printer. Every printer has its own software and it's a little bit different. Uh, I love the SprintRay Pro just for its simplicity and ease of use. If I go and find the files now under downloads, let's print this as uh, a single tooth chain and as a monolithic denture because both of these would be done in white. And they've been brought in and placed on the print bed. And you can print these however you want. If you're trying to print a lot of objects on the build plate, then you can maintain more real estate on your build plate by turning things vertical. And that allows you to get more models in. But if I'm just trying to print this and I'm, I'm not limited on room, then I'm going to turn this teeth side down. You do it teeth side down because you don't want to have to remove support materials on the internal surface of your denture and you know risk missing one and leaving a sharp spot for the patient. Same thing on the tooth chain. You want to print these with the incisal edges and occlusal surfaces down and that way you're not going to have to do a lot of trimming to ensure that this will fit properly into the socket. Now one of the things I love about the Sprint Ray printers is that Rayware software allows you to automatically uh, fix any holes. It allows you to automatically add supports. So all I have to do to add supports here is click fix. And here you see that those now have supports under them so that they'll print properly. I'll do the same thing on the denture. And even though we don't need the denture tooth reduction coping, I'll just go through the process of bringing it in as well. I would probably print that in the same material just to expedite the process. Here, I'm not really worried about the internal fit, and so I am more worried about how the teeth are going to fit internally uh, in the sockets, and so I can orient this with the denture base side down. And now we're ready to print this. This would be what I would run in white, so you've got several material options. My favorite material to print dentures and denture teeth in is the Next Dent Crown and Bridge MFH. And I like to use the bleach shade. 100 microns is more than enough accuracy. And if we look at what, how long this is going to take to print, it's going to be one hour on the nose. That's pretty darn fast. So if you've only got one printer to deal with, you could run this in white, and then you could swap out materials and then run a separate print to do your denture base if you're doing a two-piece denture. So let's delete those and just now bring in the denture base with sockets. And here we have this, and I would again suggest that you print this with the intaglio surface facing up so that you don't end up with supports internal to your denture. So that is now ready to print. I would print this in one of the pink materials. I really like the Dentka denture base material, and so I can choose denture base, and they have multiple shades available here. I usually go with the original pink, and it recommends that you use 50 micron thickness. That's fine if you want to do that. Let's look at how long this will take to print, and it's going to just under two hours. You could expedite that and, and roughly have that printing time by doing it at 100 micron resolution. So that would complete the entire process for making these dentures. You could now print these or mill these, and the last thing I'll make a video on is bonding all of those things together, your pink denture base and your white tooth chain, and polishing that up so that you have a final denture ready to deliver. And then one other thing I might suggest, if you are printing a patient a set of dentures, it's always wise to have a backup, and so it wouldn't be a bad idea to just duplicate this and then print two versions of it. Resin is cheap, and should they ever break it, it's great to have a backup, and you could maybe charge a, a nominal fee to give them a backup denture. Most patients would appreciate that and gladly pay that additional fee, and it's just going to cost you a little bit more resin, uh, but I think overall that's going to be a wise decision. Printed dentures, they're great. They have a pretty uh, similar compressive strength to a standard processed denture. However, they are going to be more brittle. They don't have the little fiberglass particles that a conventionally processed denture does. So if the patient were to drop this from you know head height down onto a hard floor, they potentially could shatter that denture. And so again, a backup is always a good idea. And just warn the patient, let them know that this is not going to be as uh, resistant to shattering should they drop it and just to be careful with it. So I hope you found that useful. That completes the denture fabrication portion in the computer side of things. And then the final video, I'll show how to process this with the resin.